Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip. Skip. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Arthurian Total War. This was a mod originally made for Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion many, 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 many long years ago. Uh, it was one of my favorite mods for Rome Total War. Um, it is a total conversion mod, and it's set in Britain and Ireland in the 6th century AD. Basically about... I don't forget what the exact game start date is, but I think it's something... 30 to 50 years after the Romans withdrew from Britannia um, and the island basically devolved into a bunch of squabbling petty kings which were eventually overrun by the migrating Saxons, Jutes and Angles over from Germany um, and um, it is a mod that is 90% historically accurate as, as much as it can be historically accurate because records and everything from, from this time period um, in this part of the world are extremely scarce um, like it's a real black spot in terms of uh, historical sources um, as to what actually really went on in Britannia after the Romans left um, so it's it's 90% you know tries to be historically authentic but also it does include um, King Arthur as a playable sort of character in the mod um, with his particular faction um, and the reason I say that's not historical is because it's we're watching. There's no real sort of reliable evidence that King Arthur ever actually existed. Um, the earliest mentions of him we ever have in, is from from a source that was written like three centuries later, and is not considered particularly reliable. Um, so, yeah. It's not King Arthur, the role-playing war game. No, no, it's not. Um, it is basically Arthurian Total War is a take on the uh, the whole idea of King Arthur as being kind of like they take the view of. Okay, so that if we assume that for a moment that King Arthur did actually exist, what would it have actually been like if it was real? Uh, if he was a real person, this is this is a depiction of what that would have looked like. Um, so. Uh, Queen, thank you very much for 63 months of subbage, by the way. It's a pretty hefty chunk of subbage, that's for sure. And the uh, and the donation optic as well. Appreciate it, man. It's a dark age and that we don't know what happened during it. I mean, historians don't like the phrase dark age these days. Um, but at least in Britain's case, in this particular little period, this, like, the 6th century, um... Yeah, it is, it is a bit nebulous as to what actually went on during that period. Um, if we go new game and we click Arthurian campaign, you can see the factions we've got available to play. Um, most of them probably can't fucking pronounce, to be honest. Um, we've got the Picts up in the north of what would become Scotland. We've got Al Clyde, um, based in and around the kind of uh, area near where... Glasgow kind of is nowadays. Um, Elmet, which is a little British kingdom down here in the sort of Midlands area. Um, we've got Gwynedd in northern Wales. We've got the Jutes, uh, the first Germanic tribe to found a kingdom on Britain over there in Kent. Uh, we've got the East Saxons or Eld Saxa. The Saxons, a fierce Germanic tribe coming from northern Germany. They're based next door to Kent. Um, and then you've got O'Neill. Um, over in Ireland. These guys I know virtually nothing about. I'm really bad when it comes to Irish history. Um, there's a few Irish kingdoms to play as, though. You've got Ebrock, um, which is a faction that is weird because it is uh, kind of a speculative one. Uh, Ebrok, or Eboricum as the Romans called it, was the kind of military capital of Northern Britannia. Um, it's where a lot of the legions were based who were guarding the frontier and whatnot. Um, it's a big city, and it was quite important, and they include it in the game as a faction because it is reasonable to assume that after the collapse of Roman rule, Eboricum would have been a large 
uh, population center, which would have been ruled over presumably by someone. Um, but we don't know anything about any kind of kingdom or anything based out of Ibericum at all. Um, it's kind of a speculative little faction. There's a lot of those because, as I said, the historical record is so crap. Um, Ibericum, by the way, is modern-day York. Um, if you didn't know that already. Um, same place. Uh, you've got Gododin um, up there in Scotland. Uh, I, the only thing I know about these guys is they're mentioned in a poem called Egododin, I think. Um, and they fought against the Picts. And I don't know much else about them. You've got Powys over in Wales. Uh, you've got Rigged, um, which is yeah descended from the Brigantes, which were a fairly, relatively famous tribe in Northern Britannia um, during the Roman period. Uh, I've got Connaught over in Ireland. Enis Manor, uh, which is over there, sort of the Isle of Man and a little chunk of Scotland there. Uh, you've got the Angles, the Angler or Eng Eng English, 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 the English, basically, originated from the Jewish Peninsula and have strong a strong tradition of service as Roman foederati. However, they have now chosen to turn on their employers and co to call more of their people to settle on Britain. Um, and they're based sort of up here in sort of um, over in East Anglia and a little chunk of what is modern day Lincolnshire, I think. Uh, you've also got the what are these guys called? Dyfed um, down in southern Wales. And then you've got Dyfnaint, probably destroying the pronunciation with reckless abandonment there. Um, that is King Arthur's faction. Um, Dyfnaint or, or Domnonia was an ally of Rome since the original invasion and was afforded a certain amount of autonomy and recognition for this support. Trade in tin and the unrivaled quality of its farmland has made Dyfnaint a rich country, but now finds itself thrust into the role of leader in the war against the Germanic invaders. Um, under its new High King, Arthur. And, uh, yeah. That's that's the faction you play as if you want to play as King Arthur, basically. Um, and... I don't know if I'm going to today, actually. I might not play as Arthur. I might play as someone else. Um, but they're probably a good choice to start with, actually. If you want to start a faction in this game. Or in this mod, rather. Um, yeah. As I said, the mod's 90% history, 10% legend. Um, in that it does include Arthur as a character in the game. Um, and that's cool, I guess. I don't mind it, really. Um, you know, what we do know for sure is that, you know, <clears throat> there was a period in the 6th century when the Germanic migrations across to Britannia did halt and were reversed. Like, there's our, we have archaeological records of that having happened. Um, so, and, you know, there are a lot of historical sources that talk about a famous battle of Baden Hill, which was fought between the Britons and the Saxons, um, and the Britons won it. And that then presumably is what heralded this reverse in, in fortunes for the Saxons and Angles and Jutes um, until, you know, the following century where they came back again in force. Um, so one can extrapolate from that that perhaps if King Arthur existed he probably led the Britons at the Battle of Baden Hill and he probably drove the Saxons out temporarily until they came back again later on um, but it's all a little bit sort of ropey because the evidence is scarce and not a lot of it is remotely reliable so uh, you've also got these guys who are based in Brittany over in what is now northern France um which were they're Britons, but they're based over here in in mainland Europe, hence the name modern name Brittany, um, which is quite interesting. They're probably quite an easy faction to start with as well, actually. Um, you've also got Gwent, the kingdom of Gwent down there in kind of southeastern Wales and a little bit of uh, uh, the west of England, west of modern day England anyway. And then you've got Dalriada, who um, are kind of straddling between Northern Ireland and Scotland because they migrated across from Ireland because you may recall that the Scots were not native to Scotland they came from Ireland um, originally, they migrated over 
Um, and then, I think added by the remaster, because I don't recall these guys being in the original mod, um, you've got the Franks over in, you know, Northern Gaul, and also the Romans. But apparently the start date for this is 481 AD. That's interesting. That's a bit earlier than I thought it was. This is like... Ooh, this is not very long after the Romans left. This is like the Romans left, like officially abandoned Britain in like 470 something, a little bit earlier than that actually. No, no, it was earlier than that, wasn't it? It was like 433. 476 is when the Western Roman Empire kind of totally collapsed. It was much earlier than that that they that they abandoned Britannia though. Um. Was it 410? Yeah, thanks. 410. So yeah, it's been 71 years um, since the Romans abandoned Britain, basically, at the start date of this campaign. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't recommend playing as the Romans, honestly. Um, that's probably not a great idea. I don't even know if they worked properly. They were not in the original mod. And if you go to a custom battle and look at their unit roster, it's absolutely tiny, so I'm not sure I recommend that at all. Um, the question is, who are we going to play as? I'm thinking it'd be kind of fun maybe to play as a Brock. We could just play as Arthur. Or we could play as Gwynedd could be interesting. Alclyde could be interesting. Rigged could be cool. They're actually a really, relatively large starting faction, actually. Or we could play as some of the uh, the Germanic guys, the Angles, Saxons, or Jutes. That's also an option. They have it relatively tough, though, because they have a whole religion problem. They have to try and convert either themselves to Christianity, or they have to convert everything they conquer to paganism. So, who holds Mercia? I mean, everyone's got a little bit of it. Powys, mostly, I think, has that kind of region lockdown, it looks like, on here. If you flip through all of these, it's sort of a mixture of Powys and, and Gwent. Um, Ipericum's got a little kind of slice of it. Yeah, I don't know who to play as. Powers could be interesting. Reg Ed could be interesting. I love that their unique unit is just utterly impossible to pronounce. Um <laughs> what even is that supposed to be? That's just that's just, just a sort of noise that I, I make when I get startled awake in the morning by a loud noise. Not that the Germanic factions have it any easier, of course. Uh, Gwent looks like they have some sort of unique archer unit. Uh, Dyfnaint has a unique unit of elite heavy cavalry, which is probably really sick, because I remember cavalry being excellent in this mod. Um, extremely expensive, but really good. Um... <clears throat> Ebrock has Petites Ebrock, which is elite, well-equipped heavy spearmen. So that is probably sort of, yeah, that's kind of like your Roman, late Roman heavy infantry, basically. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to try, have, have a crack at Ebrock. They have a weird starting situation as well, because their land is kind of split up into two chunks. 
Um, so that could be fun. I'm going to leave the campaign difficulty and battle difficulty on hard. Hard. I don't know what it's actually supposed to be balanced for, though, to be honest. So, um, Faction difficulty for these guys is rated as very hard. Out of curiosity, Diphonate are rated as hard. The Romans, medium. Franks, medium. Very hard, very hard. Are there any easies or normals in here? I have to imagine none of them are particularly... Uh, Gododin is medium, in interestingly. Oh, and O'Neill and those guys are both rated as easy as well. Ireland, once again, noob island, apparently. Just like in Crusader Kings. And the Picts and Al Clyde are both medium, apparently, as well. Interesting. I'm going to give Ibrock a go. It's difficulty very hard. How hard could it be? How hard could it possibly be? Yes, Yorkshire Strunk. So then, let's have a look. Okay, I don't think it, our land doesn't look actually quite split as up as it did on the uh, on the campaign preview screen. It is actually joined up. That's not too bad then. So we've got <clears throat> Kair Ibrok itself. So that's York. Um, we've got a couple of stacks of units. We've got the Kingdom of Elmet next door, right there. Um, and we're going to have a ridiculous deficit. So one of the things about Arthurian Total War is that it has a punishingly, cripplingly hard economy. Um, one, of the, one of the things I remember about it the most, back playing it back in the day, was that you spend actually most of your time in debt, unable to build anything or recruit anything, and you basically just have to try and make do with the troops that you have at the start. And... Um, <clears throat> you know, try and fight and conquer until you're no longer in debt. Um, so it, it's 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 a it's a dog eat dog world, and we're wearing milk bone under underwear in this in this mod. Um, in other words, uh, we do start off with fifteen grand in the bank. That's less than I got when I tested it earlier and played as Dun Dumnonia down here as Arthur. He starts with twenty grand. Lucky bastard. We've got some boats. Uh, these go boats in this mod have a really tiny upkeep, so there's no no point really getting rid of these um, because they can be super useful for quick transport along the coast. I mean, you look at the movement distance they've got on them. It's actually quite large. Um, so we'll keep the boats. Um, I'll probably keep all the troops too and just use them to go, go a-conquering at our earliest opportunity. Um... So, our unit roster is going to be full of stuff that I can't really pronounce very well. Uh, we've got spearmen, and we got really long spearmen. Uh, which is interesting. These are the more expensive in terms of upkeep. Although on paper, I feel like these guys are better. But I think these guys can effectively fight as pikemen, so they have that going for them. Uh, we've also got Kampfweer, which are champions, basically. Yeah, these guys are super, super, super good. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, the best Saxon heavy infantry. And the Saxons have kick-ass heavy infantry um, in this. The Saxons, Angles, and Jutes, I mean. When I say Saxons, I kind of mean all of them. All three. But they have some absolutely monstrously good heavy infantry. Um... However, our champions, these guys, they can pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Uh, these guys will kick ass. They'll, they'll, they'll defeat, like, many times their own number in terms of uh, enemy troops. They're a very, very precious resource. They have an upkeep of 440 a turn for a reason, so... Uh, what else do we get, though? That's the thing. That's why I want to know. We've got Petites Ibrok. Okay, so this is our unique unit for our faction. One of the most famous units rulers of Ibrok was... Elifer, the father of Peridor. Elifer's surname was Gosgordfur, of the great army. He took this epithet from his followers, among the greatest warriors of the 6th century Britain. Those warriors were highly skilled spearmen in charge of the control of the in charge of control of the Angles settled in Deira. So it looks like they are some just really kick-ass spearmen with some fancy looking helmets. Uh, in fact, yeah, their stats are amazing. 
So they're very good. Not, not that high upkeep either, actually, as well. And we've got lots of units of these guys, Dare and Foderati. Uh, since at least the era of the Vor of Vortigern, Angles settlers were present in the region of Daewear. That will become Daira. Those fog warriors were supposed to help the Britons against the Pictish invaders, but they rebelled and finally take control of the whole kingdom of Ibrook in the middle of the uh, 6th century. So these are... Yeah, these are like foreign barbarian uh, troops, essentially. Which the Romans made an awful lot of use of back in the day. Um, Stats-wise, they're not terrible. They're not fantastic. They're not awful either. And then we've got these Aulawe. Which are just, yeah, just spearmen drilled to fight kind of like Romans. Legal obligation for all men over a certain age to fight when required in Britain kingdoms. Indeed, most if not all sort of great privilege and were eager for battle. Many kept their own weapons, so men... Could be rapid. Could rapidly form militia units or alloway when their kingdom needed their service. They often fought surprisingly well, but were quick to turn tail and run if things were going badly. Uh, yeah, the morale isn't isn't amazing. Britain militia units were neither well nor badly equipped and could hold their own in a fight. But a wise commander will note their limitations and not commit them against heavily armed elite troops. Yeah, the Foderati have particularly poor morale, actually. Same with these guys here. We've got some javelin guys. That's pretty standard. And then we've got these guys. The Britons were particularly proficient in the use of the spear, and those who were particularly skilled generally preferred spears of the longer variety. The tactics of these soldiers were similar to the phalanxes of Macedonia or the pike regiments of the Renaissance. Tactics very effective against cavalry. The whatever you pronounce that as were generally part-time soldiers, and due to the cumbersome nature of their weapons, or equipment was fairly basic, light armor, if any at all, and a small round shield. Yeah. We've got our character guys. They have Tulu um, as their sort of general's bodyguard units. And these guys are just monstrously good heavy cavalry. Um, they are stupidly good. Um, literally meaning family. The Tulu were the professional noble bodyguards of individual princes and chieftains. Though cavalry are generally not best suited to the rough, uh, rough hilly and mountainous terrain of Britain. The Tulu often rode into battle. Being of the nobility, the Tulu could afford the best of military equipment and were very well armed by Celtic standards. They wore chain or scale mail and helmets and carried a shield and lance, making them a pivotal force on the battlefield. Yep, they, uh, they are excellent, excellent heavy cavalry that will put the absolute wind up the Saxons because the Saxons have absolutely no answer to that. The Saxons' big Achilles heel in this mod is that they have no decent cavalry, like, at all. They're an entirely infantry-focused roster. So, a powerful faith. Roman Christianity is the dominant faith on the map at the moment. Speaking of the map, I'm pretty sure it has been... It has, it's definitely a new map. Um, it's not the, exactly the same map as it was in the original mod. And I can tell you two reasons for that. One is that you have to remake um, the maps differently in the remaster. They have to be made as a 3D model. They're not done via a bitmap file anymore like they used to be. Um... But also, I can tell you it's different because the original Arthurian Total War map had a couple of islands in the top right and bottom left corners, which were shaped like little dragon symbols. And the reason they were there is because the original Rome Total War had an amusing glitch whereby if, um, if too much, too high of a percentage of the map was covered in water, the game would crash to desktop on loading. Uh, so to get around that, they had to make a couple of little islands in the bottom and top left. Um, that were just shaped like the Arthurian Total War Dragon logo to get around that little uh, crash to desktop problem. And those are no longer there anymore. So, okay, we've got Care Peak here, which is oh, two units of champions. There. That's eating a hole in our pockets, that's for sure. On the other hand, Care Peak here is very isolated. Not easy to defend. Uh, have we got our um, agents? We've got agents, haven't we? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the moment around for rebel provinces, which are like minor petty kingdoms that, you know, aren't actually factions in the mod that are playable. And these guys up here are looking... Yeah. Yeah, you guys are... 
definitely generic rebels. Looks like they are. Ooh, they're an interesting mix. There's some there's some Saxon units in here as well as some indigenous stuff. It's a bit of a mix. Actually, two relatively decent armies they've got up there, you know. Uh, we have a diplomat, right? This guy. Okay. So, who do we want to make friends with? I think probably Reged over in the west. Those Lancastrian bastards. We'll have to make peace with them in the short term. <laughs> so I can focus on dealing with other problems like Elmet next door to us. Actually, we should probably check. Do we start off at war with anybody? Um, I'm still getting used to the new remastered UI. Diplomatic standing. Uh, looks like we're enemies with someone. We're enemies with the angles. Down here. Okay, so they're probably going to be our immediate problem. Okay. General, general. Let's take some of you out there, add them to this army. Oh, is the stack full? It's, it is full, isn't it? Uh, Alright, let's just dump a unit Foderati there so that you can join them. March off this way. Uh, let's bring our little spy back down in this direction because I don't think I'm going to worry about that lot up there for now. Uh, let's raise taxes as much as we can. Let's try and, you know, curb the deficit a little bit. This town's not very happy to begin with. I'm not going to try raiding, raising their taxes. Uh, and spend some of our starting money as well on um, any kind of economic buildings we can get our hands on. And one thing I do like about the... One of the few things I do like about the remastered UI is if you open settlement income and you click a building, it will tell you exactly how much extra income you're going to get from building that building. Um, the original Rome Total War user interface was annoyingly nebulous when it came to that. Um, so, woodland clearance would give us a bit more. Household cesspit. Ooh, delicious. <laughs> Christian Shrine. Shrine to Kofanon. Mead Hall, Celtic Hermitage. So Woodland Clearance would get us a bit more extra money per turn. What about here? Town Markets would get us virtually nothing extra. Woodland Clearance would get us... Oh, hang on a minute, I'm looking at the wrong screen. I get 74 extra a turn. That would get us probably a little bit more. Stone Worker would get us not very much more. So I think we want to go with the market first, for Catraith. Iburicum itself, what would a port get us? Apparently nothing. Interesting. I guess because maybe because we're not trading with anybody right now. A market town would get us a big chunk of money. Communal farming would not get us that much more. Stonework we only get a little bit right. It's got to be the, uh, it's got to be the market town then, because that, that'll give us a chunk of money coming in. What about here? A fishing port would get us something, but I think we'll go with the woodland clearance instead because it's the same and also gives a bit of population growth. I think. And then down here in Care Peak. Roads get us anything? No. Alright, we'll do that. Spend some of our starting dosh on new economic buildings for pretty much every city. Cesspit, my beloved. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, Rickwood, actually, I think horses in general in this particular period of history were smaller 
across the board actually you make an excellent point but i actually admittedly i think i think i believe there is some evidence to suggest that uh war horses in general were much smaller back in the back in the classical and late antiquity sort of periods than than later on when they were being selectively bred for size Don't quote me on that. I'm not a historian. That's just something I remember reading somewhere at some point. Right, I don't think there's anything else we need to do right now. That is a full stack. It's weird because the, the banner isn't completely filled up because of the relatively small unit sizes, but that is a full stack right there. It is 20 units. Um, I think it's because we've got a lot of elite units with a very low uh, u body count, essentially. Like all these uh, Petit Tese Brock, which is just 61 guys. Um, but they will, they will kick ass, though. Um, elite units absolutely dominate in this mod, so... Um, so we're at a minus 4,600 turn right now. I'm a, a little bit loath to get rid of any of my other stuff, though. Kind of uh, the two units of camp for you here, plus the backup spearmen. They could hold that town against a decent-sized force, I think. And our neighbours around here are, what, we got Reged and... Not sure who else. But we've got a whole bunch of neighbours we need to worry about and keep an eye on, so... The Angles are our chief problem, though, because they are actually at war with us, and they're located right over here, so... Yes. Looks so like we can cross there. So we'll plot our route that way. And thinking I might bring this guy and some of his friends along as reinforcements as well, actually. Because the Angles are bound to have a pretty decent sized force down here. I think they probably, I think the, for memory serves, the Germanic faction start off with very little land, but with pretty decent armies. So. Set and turn. Alright, Elmet are marching around doing sneaky things. Don't appreciate that, boys. Don't appreciate that at all. Alright, Arthur's ascendancy to High Kingship. Arthur has been elected High King of Britain, or Amherdwir, whatever, by the other kings. This gives him the right to command the armies of Britain against the invaders, but does not imply all kings will accept his rule. He is overlord of Dyfnaint, his right arm being Geraint, whose father, Urban, has abdicated the crown in favour of him. And there's our rather woeful financial report. Uh, yeah, you can go and join them. Where's my spy at? You, get down here. I mean, I've got people I need to keep an eye on down here. Hell, I don't know... No, I don't have any characters down here, do I? They're all with the army. Wouldn't have been a bad idea to build some watchtowers before we left. Assuming you even can build watchtowers in this mod, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like you can. Or a fort if you want to. Nice. Cool. Alright, nothing much else going on, really. We're building our buildings. We're doing things and stuff. Oh, I forgot to move my diplomat. Oops. Looks like the angles have arrived. I wonder if they're going to ask for peace. The yeah, I thought they might. Do I want to do that? I might. Then I can focus on Elmet instead. Ah, yes. Peace with the peace with the dastardly, dastardly invaders, so that I can focus on beating up my fellow Britons. How uh, how perfidious of me, but yeah, I think you know what. I'll take it. Our thanks. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Um, no, I don't wanna... Uh, cancel, cancel, cancel. Right, Mr. Spy. Where did that, where did that Elmet army get to? There was one here. There they are. They're sneakily hiding in the woods. What have they got then? Some spearmen. Some pike moon guys. They've got Rerel. These look like some pretty elite spearmen of some description. Might be their unique unit, actually. They got some cavalry. Quite a bit of it, actually. Oh, they've got they've got cavalry archers. That's uh, cheeky. Uh, new diplomatic information. Let's see. Uh, Reged and Gwynedd are at war with each other. Cododin and Alclyde war with each other. And yeah, us and the Angles have signed a ceasefire. Okie dokie. We're about to go into into the into the red up here. We're gonna we're about to completely run out of any any money at all, which is not fantastic, but it is what it is. Uh, ooh, there's a Reged town. There we go. Right. Would you like trade rights, boys? Map info as well. A most generous proposal. There we go. Unlocked a little bit more map. Looks like Reged's kind of split in half. That's interesting. Oh, the uh, the O'Neills, or whatever you want to call them. They're at, they, they actually have some territory over here. That's interesting. They've got a they've taken a big bite out of uh, Reged's original starting position in the original mod, from what I remember. Yes, um, as, 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 as sort of historically ironic as it might seem, um, the Irish did a lot of raiding of Britain uh, during this period. They did a whole ton of it, coming across the Irish Sea and, and raiding Wales and Scotland and uh, what would become Northern England. They did a ton of it. A lot of them migrated across too, especially in the case of the Scots, for example. Um, the Irish were colonising Britain long before it was the other way around. How's that for irony? Anyway, that's their main army there. Their city's virtually abandoned. They've got a family member there, their king, Masquid. Who's got his two new bodyguards, as well as a unit of elite spearmen and some archers. Uh, we'd need battering rams to get through those wooden walls, so... I'm not going to be able to, like, lightning attack the city and, you know, take it out in one turn or anything like that. So I think we'll probably want to head up into the hills and try and deal with Dungarth first before we worry about the king over there in Lydus. General. Orders. Orders. General. Uh, the set, set settlements look kind of interesting in this mod as well, actually. I wonder if... Uh one of the nice features of... Well, religion's a thing in this mod. Obviously, you've got Roman Christianity, Paganism, and Celtic Christianity, which is a whole thing. Um, but one thing I do like about Rome Total War is that you can do... Somehow, you can do this. Explore settlement on battle map. And you can zoom in and you can have a look at any town you like as it appears on the battle map without there actually being a battle. I really wish you could do this in the modern Total War games. So we can actually have a look at Iburicum and see what it looks like. And that is what it looks like. It's got a big Roman wall around it and then a bunch of not quite so Roman looking buildings, although there are some scattered about. Evidence of the uh, of Roman rule that used to be here. It's not bad at all. It's kind of kind of fun, kind of cool. It's a nice mix of the two. You should be able to see the little civilians walking around as well. There they are. Hi guys. How you doing? Just milling around, going about their day. And obviously the battle map and the, the graphics and stuff, the grass, the trees all look a little bit nicer than they used to do because uh, this is the remaster, so it's got the remaster graphics, which is nice. Um, quite a, 
quite amazing looking terrain around here, isn't it, actually? Look at all these hills. Very impressive. Uh, yes, return to the campaign map. Alright then. Uh, let's drop a little save. And end turn. Dear friend. Oh, Elmet, that's bad timing, guys. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to crush you like Until bugs. Next time. The uh, the old the old uh, the old angles beat you to the punch, there, friends. Although I don't really like what they're doing right now, hopping into their boats. More Ebrok has died. Oh, our faction leader is gone. I guess he died of old age or whatever. So now uh, King Arthuis. Ebrok is our is now our new king, which means I'm now out one unit of uh, rather nice uh, bodyguard cavalry, which is a bit annoying, frankly. But never mind. How was I out? Announced was candidate for adoption. Hell yes! Uh, confident attacker. He's Christian. He'll do. He'll certainly do. He can. He can. He can command the reinforcements. Uh, right, new diplomatic information. Ines Manor and O'Neill are at war. Diafed and, and... Okay, that's a reverse of the fortunes. I thought you guys were at war. Now you're allies, apparently. The diplomacy on this one's an absolute clusterfuck. Alright, cool. Um... How close to this guy can we get without going into their territory? I think about here-ish, looks like. Could just lay siege to the town and get him to come to us, admittedly. It's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Queue up some rams. Bring you boys over here as well. And I guess we'll see what they do. Hopefully they don't decide to just counterattack immediately and go after one of my towns, because that would be annoying. Hopefully what they'll do is they'll come over here to try and relieve the siege, and then we can fight them all in one place because I'm pretty confident I can beat them if we do that. In fact... You guys can't quite get all the way up there. Although, actually... No, no. Set up an ambush. Setting up an ambush is really hard in this game, though. It's not like you in like in the later games where you can just go into ambush stance. You actually have to find some appropriate woodland to hide in and then hope they come in your direction. And you can only then you can only attack them if they come within one tile of you as well. It's not like a, you have a zone of control like in Rome too, and Attila. So I'd rather not. Inactive fleet. Yes, I I know they're inactive. They're supposed to be inactive. They did not come to get us. That's interesting. Decided to stay hiding out in the woods. Well, our market town's done in Carey Brook, which is nice, I guess. Uh, well, I guess we're just going to attack. We'll do a little siege. It'll be a very one-sided siege, but we'll do it. Battle 
Alright, alright, let's get started. So, this is the, the town we're dealing with. Um, what do you want, advisor? Go away. Who have we got on the rams? We got the little pike dudes. And you guys on there. That's, I'm okay with that, actually. I don't want to be wasting my best troops marching up and carrying battering rams around and getting shot by arrows and things, so... Let's pull you guys out in front there. We got the, the cavalry, which of course is because this is old Rome Total where I can't get them to dismount tragically. That is one feature of the later games that I've really come to appreciate immensely, is the fact that you can dismount cavalry. And not being able to do that in Rome and Medieval 2 is kind of a pain in the ass, honestly. Actually, you know what? You guys drop drop your drop your rams. I'm gonna get the the crappy Foderati to, to man the rams. Let's put the champions at the back here. We got some Ardu, which are the yeah, they're the skirmishers. Alright, cool. We're set up and ready to go, I think. Let's have a look at our units then, shall we? Now obviously they're not they're not the prettiest to look at because they're old Rome Total War one units and they haven't been remastered or anything like that. To make them prettier, so they don't look amazing, but uh, you know, they're not bad. They're not bad for ye old Rome Total War. Some of these units ended up getting used across multiple mods as well, because they were kind of a shared resource. Like, uh, I know these. I know I've seen these guys in Invasio Barbarorum before. Which is a mod I'd love to see remastered, actually, and ported over. To, to the remastered version of Rome Total War, because Invasion of Barbara Rome is a kick-ass mod. It was really good. It was like a tiller, but honestly, in many ways, a lot better. Um, but the only way to play it these days is on the original version of Rome Total War, which is honestly terrible on modern PCs these days. It does not run very well at all. And these are our unique guys, our awesome... Peditese Brock. Our crazy Yorkshiremen in their gold helmets with face masks on them. Like a bunch of fucking ordinators from Morrowind. I love it. It's pretty cool. Seems to be partially modelled on the old Roman cavalry helmets, I think. Which had face masks like that. And then you got our champions who are basically equipped like heavy Roman infantry of the sort of 4th century. Chainmail, big shield, big round shield, long sword. The works, basically. And then there's the Tulu at the back, our heavy cavalry, who, in an open field, kick ass. They're very good. Not in an open field today, though, unfortunately. We're actually going to be assaulting a town. Oh, wait, no. It's just. Oh, yeah. Rome Total War 1 Siege is nowhere near as good as Rome 2 once. <laughs> Especially when it comes to using siege weapons on walls. Far too uniform for the 5th century. Yeah, I know, unfortunately. And with the remaster, you can add unit variations, but that's a lot of work um, for someone who just wanted to quickly port over the mod to be playable on the remaster. I think the guy who made this actually mentioned these. They have basically no no 3D modeling experience at all um, on the Steam Workshop page, so we can't expect miracles. But, uh, you know, yes, the old Rome Total War back in the day. No unit variation. Everybody looked the same.
So maybe they got guard in the gate. It's archers. And then up here they've got the Tulu, their own Tulu, which look noticeably different from ours actually, which is nice. So we've got this guy with a glitch sword texture. That would be their king. And then they've got their heavy spearmen here in the center. Having much luck with those arrows right now. I'm trying to figure out who they're shooting at. Oh, they're trying to burn the ram. They are, aren't they? Reinforcements arrived. Ooh, reinforcements. Where? Oh, they're just at the back here. But they're not coming on. Because uh, you can't control large armies in uh, in the original Rome either. You can't do. You can't have forty stack armies. I forgot about that. I uh. I've been playing Rome two and Attila for so long. I completely forgot that you can't have forty units in a battle at the same time. At least you can't directly control them anyway. You can let the AI control them, but that's obviously usually a terrible idea because the Rome one AI is. Abominably stupid. The battering ram is at the walls. Our warriors attack. Now is the time for great deeds. Spoiled by modern games, yeah. I mean, the remaster is cool because it does have a lot of nice quality of life features borrowed from the later games. Like, for example, I could do the old click drag and hold control to rotate thing with my with my formation, which is very nice. And the big thing for me as well is it has the modern camera controls. You guys don't need to run. You really don't need to run. What are you doing? They're insisting on running. I don't know why. Um, it has the modern camera controls as well, so I can pan around with middle mouse button and WASD and stuff like that. Whereas in the old Rome Total War, the camera, and in Medieval 2, the camera worked differently and was extremely irritating to use. Um... It's one of the things I hate the most about going back to Medieval 2 these days, actually, is the fact that I hate the camera in Medieval 2 Infantry. compared to the modern games. Infantry. You guys want to chuck some javelins at those archers? Give them a taste of their own medicine? Not as effective as one might have hoped. Come on, get in there. Just go stab them a bunch with your spears. From his own walls, the way to victory is open. Go attack! Oh god, gotta love that Rome one pathfinding. What is going on here? Attack them for goodness sake! A medieval two remaster would be fucking sweet. Yes. If they could somehow make it backwards compatible so that mods would just work properly on... Oh yeah, you guys, your ram's toast, isn't it? You're going to have to get up here. If they could somehow make it backwards compatible for modding, that would be really sweet. They probably won't, though. Because one of the biggest problems I have with, with the remaster is honestly just that... It, it requires a lot of work to port over a mod for the original to the work on the remaster. Tried 1100 AD for Rome 2. I haven't actually. No, I, I, I've, I mean, I have. When it comes to like medi my medieval fix, I've got 1212 for um, <coughs> for Attila instead. I might give 1100 a try one of these days, but I think I think uh, I think 1212 is just better to be honest these days, especially since they added the uh, the, the optional open beta. Uh, medieval like settlements thing like you can have actual proper medieval towns now in 1212 AD which is awesome you like 1100 AD because of Rome's 2 performance to be honest with you man I get exactly the same performance from Attila and, and, and Rome 2 uh, these days 
I don't know when that changed exactly. Could have been driver updates, could have been just the way my PC runs, um, but I get basically the same performance from both games. And Attila looks noticeably prettier as well, so... I think I might bring up a couple of units of the really top-tier spearmen. Because they do have those cavalry. And out of everything I've got, these are the guys to deal with that, so... Giving these archers a good stabity stab. The battles are definitely slower than in, in, in Arthur in Total War versus Vanilla. Um, I think by design. I like slower battles in general, which is nice. So I don't mind at all. But I think it's also suited to the lower lower unit count scale as well. The game kind of deliberately... The, the, the mod has deliberately small units because that's reflective of historically what the actual army sizes would have been in this period. Um, so in order to avoid the battles being over in about six seconds, um, they've lengthened them quite a bit by fiddling with the unit stats and stuff. So if somebody could capture this tower, I'm just going to stand next to it. Can we capture it? I don't remember how it works in the old Rome Total War. It's just tower always going to be hostile because you can't it's not like it's on a proper walls where I can run my men through it and capture it so I think it's always going to be belonging to them isn't it a bit irritating but don't mind bring up the little skirmisher guys yeah most units seem to have two hit points um yep you're right and most of them seem to have pretty high defense stat as well Oh yeah, yeah. The in the classical period um, and in late antiquity, when it came to like the Romans and whatnot, yeah, they had absolutely colossal armies. They were huge. Um, you know, to the total war games have never been able to actually match real life in terms of scale for those particular time periods. Um, this this period here, like 6th century Britain, is one of the actually really rare examples of a time when... Of a, of a historical period where the, you can actually accurately re recreate army sizes, you know, in, in the game as, as to what they would have been in real life. Oh, some of the archers escaped. How do I get there? There we go, I need 10 movement paths on. Might bring up. You're not the king. You're not our faction leader, so you can come up here. Get up there and chuck some javelins. Same for you. Can you guys form a shield wall? Yeah, you can. You guys can't, can you? No. Oh, oh, here they come. Proud to watch these two do some serious face wrecking, wrecking, I think. They didn't really get a proper char charge off, though, so... There's that, at least. Uh, let's get you guys into a shield wall. March up there. Let's bring, uh... What was your name? Einion? Einion. That's, you. That's your name, apparently. Einion, you're gonna come up this way. 
too loose for target. <laughs> Very good. These guys should really be cycle charging. Um, you know, they're not medieval knights at the end of the day. Um, you guys, these guys, if they weren't, yeah, I wanted to get the most out of them. They'd be cycle charging back and back and forth. Really ruining my day. But it's Rome Total War 1 and the AI is dumb, so they're not going to do that. In fact, I think they might have already routed one of my units. And they've, yeah, they've collapsed straight into my shield wall back here. This is pretty much right where I want them, though. As far as my um, elite spearmen are concerned. Got the enemy right where we want them. Where's that king at? There he is. Oh, he's routing. So we're going to be stab him, is he? Oh, the javelin guy's got him. As if. Well done, boys. The javelin peasants managed to take out the king. I love it. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's a bunch of elite spearmen right there, isn't it? Uh, right. Now would be a good time to bring up the Tulu. Trying to get a charge off here is going to be weird and awkward, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, it's not really happening, is it? And of course, it's the town square in Rome Total War, so these guys will just end up fighting to the death now. Instead of, you know, breaking and ending the battle. They're dying pretty fast, though, which is good. I mean, if we can just push them out of, uh, far enough out of the square, they will probably round, and then that'll be it. Oh, oh, routing, broken, not broken, broken, routing, what's happening? Hard to say. There we go, end battle. Yeah, I'm not going to fight anymore. There we go, 230 casualties inflicted. We've got... We lost about 200, which is fine, I guess. Bear in mind, none of this is replaceable right now because we're in debt. Um, so every every guy we lose is one that we can't actually get back at the moment. Um, and that's how it goes for a lot of the campaign in Arthur in Total War. It's kind of what makes it exciting and fun, actually. Uh, okay, Lydus captured. We could enslave, occupy, exterminate... Exterminate would probably be an extremely bad choice long term. And we'll just occupy. We shall simply occupy. Um, we can't afford to fix that wall either because uh, we got no money. Our deficit now, though, however, has gone down to just a paltry minus 412. Compared to the minus several thousand it was earlier. Of course, we still got this army to deal with. That's definitely a problem. I think there's more of Elmet down here. I mean, they've got this. There's this territory down down here as well. The the annoying thing about the remaster is I can't just right click on the map and have a tooltip tell me who this province belongs to. For some reason, that functionality has been removed in the remaster, and it drives me a little bit nuts that that's the case. But uh, there is a little town here, and it's got the Elmet logo over it. So we're off to a start, though. Now, Mr. Diplomat, what would you like to do? Should we still go talk to these Irish guys? If I can find one of their settlements here somewhere. Might be a good idea. 
Think you repair through the build member menu? Oh, I know. I know how to repair. I'm telling you that we have minus 6,405 gold right now, which means I cannot afford to repair it. You may have misheard me, but I did say I, we can't afford to repair it. Not that I don't know how. Was that Witcher 3 music? No, this is um, the music in the mod is taken from the original Medieval Total War. Um, however, that particular little tune you heard, that little bit of Celtic music, that is there's a net that that piece of music has a name, and it gets reused a lot um, because it's an old bit of folk, folk music. Um, it is used in the in the Witcher soundtrack um, in Skellige at one point. Um, but yes, as Rickwood said, it is a it's a shared medieval song. It's an it's not it's a it's a bit of folk music that gets uh, used all over the place. So you see it, you see it come up in a lot of game soundtracks from time to time. I think I think it gets used in the Heroes of Might and Magic soundtrack at one point as well. Yeah. Name is Fearabata. If that's how you pronounce it, probably not because it's friggin. Gaelic or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Gaelic deciding to use the uh, the Latin alphabet is, I guess, just their le where, their way of having the last laugh. Farabata. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, far enough. Maybe. Should we merge you guys? Free up some... Where's the merge button? Where is it? Merge, there we go. Auto sort, which is a really nice thing as well. I like the, the auto sort unit cards button, that's handy. Um, Now I can add these missile cavalry to the army, why not? Could be handy. Everything's collapsing and we don't have money to repair it. This game is too realistic, yep. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could I could absolutely absolutely gut my entire army in order to not be um have a deficit at all. But then I'd be kind of defenseless, and the best way I think, generally speaking, in in Rome, in a total war game, where you have this kind of problem with the economy, the best way to solve it is to just conquer rather than by de the, rather than downsizing your army, just conquer. So there's another mod for Rome Total War Remastered called Imperium Serectum, which I have an on again off again relationship with, um, because it's based on the old Roma Serectum mod for Rome Total War, which I helped work on back in the day. But um, Imperium Serectum, they, they have a similar... Th the economy is similar in that as well. Um, like, you start off massively in debt, and you're supposed to basically just go forth and conquer to actually stabilise it, basically. Um, I have mixed feelings about that, because I don't feel like that's very appropriate for the time period and, 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 and whatnot they're trying, to dis they're trying to portray in that mod. I think it works in Arthurian Total War because you're paying, you're playing as a tin pot warlord in post Roman Britannia, um, with basically no money and very limited resources. And so I feel like it makes sense that in order to support a large, relatively elite army like we've got here, you're absolutely just, you know, there's no treasury left at this point. You're basically running on loot that you get from taking enemy settlements. Um, I don't, however, feel that's very appropriate in Imperium Serectum, where you're playing as the Roman Empire, um, you know, or, or the Kingdom of Macedon, or, or, the, or Ptolemaic Egypt, or, or any any one of these large Mediterranean powers of the classical era. Um, I don't think it makes sense for them to be having the same kind of monetary problem. But uh, we'll, we'll save that rant for when I eventually decide to show off Imperium Serectum on here, which I might do at some point. Yes. Talking about classical, we'll be getting Pharaoh. Well, Pharaoh's not the classical period, but 
Um, yes, absolutely. In fact, I've actually asked if I can have pretty please have a have a review copy of Total War Pharaoh. I have heard nothing back about it. Probably won't for quite a while until we get close to release. But um, assuming I don't get a review copy of it, I will absolutely be buying Pharaoh. I am extremely look looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, I um, I recently went to the British Museum, as I've mentioned before, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, and I spent a lot of time. Um, milling around in the Egyptian galleries and looking at a lot of the Bronze Age stuff. Making mental notes and taking photographs and stuff for when I get around to playing Pharaoh. It's gonna be good. I'm really looking forward to it. I've seen a ton of whinging about Pharaoh. I, I'll be honest with you. I'll level with you folks. Um, I've seen a ton of whinging about Pharaoh and I'm not on board for any of it. I think the game genuinely looks really interesting. I get some of the criticisms. I do get some of them. Like, I agree that I'm not a huge fan of basically having immortal main characters that just respawn after, they, after they're killed on the battlefield. I think that's a bit lame. Um, there are elements like that of the gameplay which I don't particularly care for. However, I've, to be honest with you, a lot of the whinging I've seen about Pharaoh pretty much seems to boil down to either the price of the game, which, you know, fair enough, whatever, or... It's not Medieval 3, and therefore I'm having a tantrum because it's not Medieval 3. I mean, literally, not even Medieval 3. It's literally just people whinging about Pharaoh because it's not a total war game that is about Western Europe. That's basically what it boils down to. I've seen lots of videos, even by even by YouTubers who I, I generally like and who do excellent content, but their, 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 their videos about Pharaoh generally seem to boil down to it's not another Rome Total War, it's not medieval, and it's not Empire. In other words, it doesn't involve Western Europe somehow, and therefore I hate it. Um, and I, I think that's really lame, honestly. I think one of the greatest strengths of the Total War series is it can generate new interest in periods of history that previously people didn't people didn't know an awful lot about, you know, that weren't, weren't, weren't really part of the popular consciousness. Like, think about how many people are, have a, have an interest in like medieval Japan now as a result of playing Shogun Total War, for example. I sure as hell do knew fuck all about medieval Japan until I played Shogun Total War. Um, you know, I think that's a really good strength of the Total War series. I would like them to go to more obscure pieces of history and p places around the globe and make games about it so that people can learn about it and it generates some interest, um, personally. I'd really like them to do a game based on the Assyrian Empire in like the 9th century BC because that's a period of history that just kind of gets a little bit ignored generally speaking um you know there was a there was a fantastic mod for Rome Total War which incidentally I really hope gets ported over to the remaster at some point by somebody uh but it was called Rise of Persia and it was basically about the rise of Achaemenid Persia you know you could play as some Greek factions and Persia itself obviously and everything in between um, and that was a really fantastic mod. I really enjoyed playing that. I'd love to see a, I'd love to see a proper full-blown Total War game though about the rise of Persia. That would be sick. The only valid criticism I've seen so far is it doesn't include Mesopotamia. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't include Mesopotamia yet. I have a strong suspicion that in subsequent DLC, if they decide to make subsequent DLC, they'll probably add Mycenaean Greece and Mesopotamia. I suspect. I suspect that's something they'll probably do. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, scratching my nose, picking my nose. I shouldn't do that. It's bad of me. Bad streamer. At least I'm not yawning anymore. promo pics I really hope the cities look like that yeah me too it does look beautiful I think from what I've seen of the preview footage and and, and screenshots and whatever because can't take can't take any of that for granted with creative assembly because we all remember Rome too right but uh certainly the preview stuff has looked very very pretty 
Cam yeah, the campaign customization stuff does look like it could be a laugh, actually, to play around with, that's for sure. Yeah, I have to admit, I don't, I don't want a fantasy mode for it, Rick. Was I? Uh, they may end up adding that as some sort of silly DLC, like they did with Troy, to be honest. But um, I hope they don't, because I, I appreciate the commitment to actually making a historical Total War game again. Candidate for adoption? Yeah, why not? Uh, new a new pope in Rome. There we go. 483 AD. And messages arrive from the Vatican. Pope Simplicus, Simplicius even has died. The bishops and clergy near Rome have elected a new pope, Felix the Third, after much del deliberation. Good to know. These guys still refusing to move. It's interesting. We're gonna have to deal with them one way or the other, aren't we? Um, you guy, uh, new guy here, you, you're going to hang out in Lydus. Can I make it so the town isn't going to rebel next turn? That would be nice. Although, whoa, suddenly I'm getting a huge deficit. Is that because I moved my troops out of town? Is this some kind of, some kind of medieval two style discount on upkeep if you keep you guys in a city? in this mod that I wasn't aware of? Quite possibly. Uh, let's move you into that town there and let's have you join that army. Uh, I reckon I can take these guys with just this stack. I'm hoping the terrain here isn't going to be awful, though, is the thing. We're up in the hills, so... This could be horrid. Well, the Canaanites will be represented in Pharaoh, I believe. They're kind of the third big overarching faction you can play as. You got the Hittites, the Egyptians, and the Canaanites, I believe. Alright. Uh, start deployment. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, we are kind of fighting on on the hills here, but we've, funnily enough, we've actually managed to get ourselves up on the high ground, which suits me just fine. All right, let's let's do this and see. Ah, oh, you automatically deploy a shield wall. Okay, well let's have a shield wall reaching right out across the front there. Let's have these guys in the rear, like so. I'll have the pi big pike guys over on the flanks. Kind of deployed almost diagonally, I guess. Actually, that wouldn't hurt. A sort of angle like that, that would work. Um, have the Ardu at the back there, so they can chuck their javelins over the top there. We can have the champions, who don't need to be in shield wall right now, they can be at the back. And then, I guess we can deploy our elite spearmen sort of like out like this. taking on a kind of defensive formation here obviously. I'm hoping that we can try and get the enemy to come to us. The main problem is going to be that they've got horse archers honestly. That's something that concerns me a bit. I have no real way of fighting back against that. I don't have any archers of my own. I just have these skirmisher cav with javelins who are obviously going to be outranged by the horse archers. All right, well, there's the Kingdom of Elmet down, deployed down here. They've got a lot of the pike guys, haven't they? They're coming up the hill 
the fighters. They've also got some cavalry. There's the horse archers. Equipped Roman style. I think the shield texture's gone a bit bugged at the ends there, look. It's probably a remaster problem. Well, steady, lads. Here they come. Britons against Britons, how sad. Well, we need their land and their money. It's every man for himself right now here on the island of Britannia. getting ready to march up towards us or are they going to just sort of wait and hang out here? Looks like they're bringing up the horse archers. Yeah, they are. Alright, loose formation. Try and harass those horse archers a bit, guys. Turn skirmish mode off just to keep it simple. Oh, they're trying to do the Cantabrian circle thing, but it never really works properly. Just making themselves sitting ducks. Um, well, okay, that's that. Where'd the other unit force just go? Oh, they, they've withdrawn. They're just sitting there on the flank now. Cavalry. You guys are almost out of javelins, though. In fact, that's probably your last load, isn't it? Yep. Cavalry. And I don't know about the stats, but I'm eyeballing you guys. Dressed and equipped as you are, and I'm eyeballing these guys. And I'm thinking these guys are probably better than you guys are in melee. So I don't know if I want to charge in there and attack you in melee. We'll give it a try, see what happens, I suppose. Do you want to live forever? Uh, they're wavering. I guess we've got that charge bonus going for us. And looks like the rest of their army is now making a move. Okay, I'm worried about them. Alright, here they come. It's like their elite spearman it is. I need to hit them in the rear with the Tulu, I think. How are you guys doing? Whoa! Okay, time to withdraw. I don't need you fighting spearmen. Especially not pike spearmen. I should notice that a bit sooner. What's going on over here? We've pushed right through. Of course. We're all wearing, wearing very similarly coloured tunics, so it's kind of tricky to see what's actually going on over here. What's that? Oh, that's their heavy cavalry. See if we can pin them down. Go after them. 
Wait, you guys go around the flank instead. All right, there's a mass route happening, which is obviously lovely to see. Their elite spearmen are the only ones holding the line at all. Their general leaving, yeah, I think they're just straight up withdrawing with whatever they've got left at this point. Love to see it. Yeah, well, yeah, it was an impressive. I mean. End of the day, they were fighting uphill um, against a shield wall of units with better stats. Um, and I think their basic dudes had pretty poor morale to begin with as well. I mean, look, you can see over here, their one competent unit of infantry is holding out heroically over here. They're getting massacred, but they're not running. Um, and they had their general way too far away from the main fight to even, like, you know, provide his morale buff as well, so... like they killed the last of them. Celebrations, everybody! There it is. I'm just going to end the battle. they got 500 guys remaining, apparently. Unsurprisingly, the Tulu got a chunk of casualties inflicted. Uh, the Fodorati got quite a lot. I have to assume most of that was from chasing guys that were running away, though. Because the Fodorati are pants. They're a rubbish unit. Marvelous. I think they just disintegrated those guys, didn't they, completely? Alright, Mr. Spy, you can come down here and... Have a little look at whatever's going on in this neck of the woods. Looks like that might be their last settlement, as far as I can tell. What have they got there? Not, not, not a lot of very good stuff. In fact, it's largely all very, very crap indeed. Um, Fair chunk of cavalry. That's not going to help them very much in a town, though, in a siege battle, so. Let's march you boys over here to this here bridge. You can camp out on that for now. Uh, can we auto sort all unit cards? There we go. That's a bunch of nicer looking. Alright. You guys on very high tax rate? Yeah, you are. You guys are on normal. Let me increase that a bit. Increase that to high. I'm just trying to curb the deficit a little bit so it doesn't get totally out of control. Could probably get rid of one of these. Is the highest upkeep you guys have. Just disband you as well. Oh, but that's now made the town angry. So that has not really netted me much extra in the long run, I don't think. Never mind. The other thing is I've got Care Peak down here, which has these two extremely expensive units of champions in it. I don't know if I want to get rid of them, though, because they're such a precious resource, even though they are costing me 440 upkeep a turn. If I got rid of both these units of champions right now, we'd actually be making a profit. I think I'd rather, however, use them to 
capture an enemy town with. Uh, so let's see. I don't... I'm not mad keen on these pike guys. They seem a bit crap. So let's swap them out for some more champions. And these guys will just... They'll, they'll, they'll absolutely destroy that garrison. Gonna disband you. Tempted to disband you guys as well, actually, but I don't think I will for now. Don't know if we need both of you units here. Okay, that's got the deficit pretty well under control now. Minus 247 a turn right now. That's okay. I think I'm happy to let that tick over for a bit. Yes, I know I've got an inactive fleet. That's fine. Oh, the in turn times are so fast in the remaster. I love it. New diplomatic information. Uh, Gwent and Elmet have broken their alliances. Good to know, I suppose. I don't mean we're at war with Gwent because they were allied. I should probably check that, huh? That feels like that might be relevant information. No, we're just we're just enemies with the uh, with Elmet, and we're trading with Regad. Actually, speaking of trade, I totally forgot about my little wee uh, you know diplomat over here. He should have been doing stuff this entire time. A most generous. There we go. We've Got a bit of map information from these Irish guys. And some trade rights, rather crucially. Um, let's send you north. For the moment. It's got a little bit of extra dosh. I'd like somebody to trade with who I can trade with via the ocean, actually. That'd be pretty sweet. Right, and then there's another Mizen, which we will besiege and build lots of rams. I spy hunt around a little bit here. Oh, do Elmat have even more down here? Looks like they do. They do. They have. There is. There's more. Everybody. Not much more, but there's more. They've got some other stuff down here. Interesting. And these are the angles, right next door. They're gonna be our. They're gonna be the next, next, the next guys on our shit list. After we've dealt with Elmet, we're gonna kick the angles back into the ocean. At least that's what we would be doing. In fact, as a matter, as a matter of fact, it's just gone six o'clock, and I kind of need to end the stream now, really. But uh, I think I've given you all a pretty good taste of Arthurian Total War at this point. Um, I recommend it. It's on the. It's available on the Steam Workshop. I spent a ridiculous amount of time playing this mod back in the day. I loved it. Um, and I have to say, I like the remastered version. It's very nice. And uh, I think, crucially, the big thing for me with the remastered version of this mod is that it's way more stable than the original mod was. The original Arthurian Total War crashed all the time. Um, the remastered version, on the other hand, doesn't seem to do it at all. Which is really nice. Um, so, yeah from that perspective it definitely gets a thumbs up from me yeah, it's it's really good fun though i, I really enjoyed it i i particularly recommend playing as dyphnaint down here as king arthur himself that's good fun um you can have a great time difficult but great time playing as any of the germanic factions um and also i can really recommend gwynedd up here in the top left of wales i had a very long running campaign as gwynedd in this mod back in the day that i enjoyed immensely. Gwynedd have some very good cavalry um, and I, I had a really, really long running, really really fun campaign as them back in the day with this. So uh, yeah, it's good. There's lots of facts to choose from. They're all pretty interesting. Um, yeah. It's good stuff. If you're curious about this time period but maybe you don't own this um, game or maybe you'd prefer to play Medieval 2. There is a Medieval 2 mod 
called Draco, in Insularis Draco, I think it's called, and it's pretty much the exact same concept as this mod. It's 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 Britain and Ireland in around the sixth century AD, uh, with a lot of very similar factions, but it's it's in medieval two, um, on the medieval two engine, and um, in many ways it's a lot more advanced. It's a much more recent mod. It's actually still in active development, I think. Um, which um, you may want to check out as well. Um, I'm checking. I'm playing off in right now, mostly for the nostalgia and because I do like Roman Total War Remastered. But Encelaris Draco is arguably, probably these days, a a more in depth, um, more polished take on the exact same time period and exact same geographical location. So that's also worth checking out if you have any interest in it. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I'm going to drop a save. There we go. It broke. We can come back to it at some point if we ever feel like it. That was the name of the Medieval 2 mod. Insularis Draco. Um, I'll type it in the chat for you. Hold on. There we go. It means Island of the Dragon, I think, in Latin. So, um, yeah, that's also very good. That's also very good. It's on Medieval 2. So in, 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 in some ways that's good, in some ways that's bad, because Medieval 2 is better and worse than Rome in some ways when it comes to its game engine and the way the battles work. But uh, that's also worth checking out. I'd love it if someone made a mod for this time period for Thrones of Britannia, actually. Because I quite like modded Thrones of Britannia, but um, uh, the time, mo most of the mods for that are either in the Viking era or uh, the Norman invasion. So a bit later on. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, folks. Um, next week, uh, I feel like doing a little bit more Total War stuff. We might Next week, we might check out Medieval Kingdoms 1212 again um, and play around with the new custom medieval settlements for some, some medieval siege battles. That could be quite fun. Um, sort of clown around with that a little bit. Uh, could also check out some other Rome Total War remastered mods. Like I said, I might, I'm tempted to show off Imperium Serectum a little bit potentially i think someone also remastered the viking invasion and norman norman invasion mods as well for uh, rome remaster as well i think someone did a remaster of those um so they might be worth playing around with too because they were pretty damn fun mods back in the day i'm still waiting for someone to come along and remaster invasio barbarorum because that was probably my favorite mod for rome total war full stop it was just so amazing um and I'm wait. I even did a t series of it on my channel back in the day. Actually, now I think about it, very very long time ago. Um, and I'm also waiting for someone to come along and remaster Fourth Age Total War, which was the uh, Lord of the Rings mod, which set in the Fourth Age after the end of the actual books and films. Um, so long after Aragorn has died and whatnot, based on of it was largely based on Tolkien's abandoned sequel to the uh, to the Lord of the Rings. It was a really, really fun mod. It was really, really cool. Really well researched. Played fantastically. Had really cool factions. It was, it was awesome. Um, we going back to Age of Empires someday. Probably will, yeah. Probably will when I get the itch again. Be nice to have an ending soon screen. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I probably should make an ending soon screen rather than just defaulting back to this all the time. But never mind. Um, anyway, folks, I'll be back tomorrow. And I think we're going to be streaming Baldur's Gate again tomorrow. That's what we'll be back doing. More more Dudley the Destroyer in Baldur's Gate will probably be what's on the menu for tomorrow. Um, and then um, on Saturday it'll be more of the same again, probably. Another double bill of Baldur's Gate. And then on Sunday it'll be Morrowind. That's the idea anyway. Unless something comes up. I, I may or may not be busy this weekend. I, I it's It's not totally clear yet exactly what's going on. Uh, but I'll keep you guys updated on that anyway. Um, but the plan at the moment, subject to change, is Baldur's Gate tomorrow and on Saturday, and then Morrowind on Sunday. So tune in for that, as and when you can, as and when you feel like it, or don't. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to see if we can raid anybody. Do, 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 do. Looks like, has Variax just started streaming, or is he about to finish streaming? 
I think he's just started. I see the little countdown timer on his on the thumbnail. So we're going to raid Variac because I think he's literally just started up a, a Baldur's Gate 3 stream. So let's head over there. Give him give him my warmest regards, old V. We, we love Variax because if he wasn't for him, this channel wouldn't exist. So go say hi to Big V. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Toodaloo.